Hello everyone and welcome to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0 0.1.1.0. So this is after the first patch for Early Access Kerbal Space Program 2. In the very first version of Early Access Kerbal Space Program 2, I attempted to build the International Space Station. In this version, I am going to attempt to build a moon base. That is going to be my project. And we are going to test whether we can have everything be stable on the surface of the moon uh, while we put a whole bunch of modules in close proximity to each other. Uh, so that is an interesting test to me. Uh, the International Space Station was testing a whole bunch of stuff and uh, we'll probably revisit that at some future date, but I've had enough of docking for now. Now we are going to do proximity landing. So uh, to that end, we are going to be using a bunch of reusable or semi-reusable rockets to deliver a variety of different payloads to the surface of the moon. Each payload will be making the transfer on its own, so we're not going to ask a separate stage to try and get them there. I think the Delta V will work out just fine. We're not going to skimp on parts, and so we're going to probably end up with a lot of lag on the surface of the moon at this moon base, but we'll see where we get that lag. And, uh, well, it's a little bit hard. I don't want to pull apart the fairing, but uh, we've got, in this case, a very light surface base. It's a cupola on top of some fuel tanks and landing legs. As people have suggested, I have increased the spring strength and damper strength all the way. Uh, so we have much strength there, and we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, uh, and we'll take a better look at the lander uh, once we get to orbit and it makes its way out to the moon. But we have our launcher. I've gone with purple and sort of a creamish white uh, motif for this save. This is a completely clean save. There's nothing else that has gone on in the save. This will be the first launch in the save. But for this space agency this time, we have the cream and purple motif because I want things to stand out on the moon's surface. Uh, so obviously purple will. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this is a recoverable launcher down here. Uh, we've got the parachutes there. That's our method of recovery. We're not planning to use thrust primarily. Uh, I don't know if that's enough parachutes. We'll find out. We've got the fins here uh, for descent. I think they'll be sufficiently obstructed by the fairing. Well, who knows about the fairings these days, uh, but hopefully this will be stable. And we have a skipper and some swivels. So that is our configuration and I'm once again trying the really strong landing legs or apparently really strong landing legs and once again the spring strength and damper strength are maxed out. So let's see how this works out. We are going to take this into orbit. This will deorbit and the payload will go on to the moon. Oh, we might as well throw a Kerbal in. Bill will be fine. Okay, even our launch clamps are purple. So, uh, well, there's no specific timing necessary. We've got a residual surface velocity of 0.7 meters per second. <laughs> uh, that doesn't make me feel good. The root part is this controller here to help with stability. But who knows? Anyway, um, let's find out. And launch. Uh, there's a lot of... The shadows are making a lot of fuss on the fairing there, but okay. We are off. It doesn't have a very high thrust to weight ratio at the start. These side things do not decouple, they're integral to the whole thing, so it is a complete recoverable launcher. The reason I didn't put six of them and uh, make them look like Proton is because I wanted the landing legs there. I don't really want the fins to actuate right now, but it's all right. They're making aerodynamic streaks there. And through a layer of clouds. Always nice. So, I don't know, I think the fins might be too strong. Uh, I think it's getting unstable. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Let's just dump the fins. Maybe it'll be alright on the way down without them.
Well, we'll go straight up for a while and do it that way. Okay, now, can we turn? Uh, a little bit dodgy, but it might be all right. We really need to, otherwise we won't have enough Delta V. If that fairing did anything, the fins would be all right. Anyway, it's probably best not to have the fins in this situation anyway. Let's just coast. Let me get rid of the fairing. Those fairings, yeah. Definitely not thrilled with those, but... And there they go in a weird way. We'll have to leave this on a suborbital trajectory anyway, because it doesn't have enough fuel to come down otherwise. So the payload will make orbit on its own since we lost some because of the flip. Oh, that finished a lot earlier than I thought it would. Okay, well, whatever. Mm, decoupling. Uh, okay, well, that decoupler did funny things again. Okay, well, Bill is still here. And ignition. Get Bill to orbit first, and then we'll worry about the launcher. We have margin for this. No problems. That's orbit. We'll leave it there for now. And go back to the launcher, which is already descending. Uh, you have this next time. What happened? Well, let's see, is this... Why is there so many default names? Okay, this default name 6... Oh, gosh. Um, hold on. I think our launcher just completely broke apart. Uh, escaping Kerbin. Okay, yeah, our launcher launched itself into an escape trajectory like that. I wasn't intending to build a base around on Duna, but uh, it's like trying for a Duna intercept or something, I don't know. Okay, I don't know if it's safe to decouple things from other things anymore or, I mean, uh, yeah, hmm. Okay, yeah, I don't think everything's perfectly fixed in this version. We will continue with our plan though. <laughs> Mercifully, that our plan did not require me to land the launcher. Bill is alright. Maybe I should just stick to using the shuttle. It doesn't really matter what way around the moon we go. Well, at least they fixed the thing where we can right-click on the periapsis and it'll stay up. Here we go. We've got the shiny baguette tanks. And the purple and creamish white. I might as well just put the gear down, it doesn't really matter. It does have solar panels. No RCS or RCS ports. Just a Terrier engine at the bottom. Go. Well, at least that little bar makes sense now. I don't know about the negative 01 stage though. Two, one, cut. Okay, that'll do. Bill is on his way to be the first at our lunar base. And we already have space junk. Let me see if we can just destroy that before it becomes a problem. Uh, as if it isn't already a problem. Let's just destroy all those. That's a lot of pieces. It really disassembled itself into every possible thing. Well, I think that's all of them. We are in Mooner SOI. We're headed straight for it. I haven't picked a landing spot. Somewhere flat would be nice. Though craters are always scenic. Alright, ignition. 
No, we're pretty low on the periapsis end right now. Let's sort of see a tranquility-ish. Vaguely. Right? There's dramatic music. Drums and everything. And I'm gonna try and land right here. A little bit fuzzy though. Maybe we should land in one of the tighter craters. But we'll see what the fuzz fuzzy sea-like landscape, mare landscape, looks like up close. One minute, huh? Okay, well, let's see. It's probably too soon. I certainly tried my best to position the landing legs so this would not topple. Practically everything else I plan to deliver will be bigger. Maybe not as many parts, but bigger. The disintegration of our launcher certainly reminds us not to be complacent in this version. Interesting, I think the engine makes more sound as we get closer to the surface. Which would make sense. Okay. Well, we're definitely sticking to the surface with this uh, dampening strength and everything. Alright, we have landed. We barely had enough fuel as it turns out with the way I landed. Okay, well, I think it's time for Bill to do the honors. The ladder stretches all the way down. Uh, it looks like the ladder isn't very well placed. Gosh, it used to be that they would just go on to the ladder, I guess. Uh, I guess that's not a thing now. Okay. I think this is the first time I'm having a Kerbal walk on another surface, or did I do that with Jeb on Duna? I forget. Okay, plant flag. Um, site name. Moon base alpha. Black text. Well. Uh, I didn't mean the comma to pause the game game. At least my pod, my module landed safely. Okay, unpaused because I pressed period there. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe when typing in flag text we shouldn't have it pause and unpause the game. But that's a minor, minor issue. We can remove flags. So now, of course, to make a base out of it, we at least need to deliver one more. So we need to get things started properly. And hopefully, maybe I'll try a different... At least going up, uh, we can board directly without doing some sort of weird maneuver. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll try some other launcher that won't disintegrate, maybe. No, we should try the same one and see if it still disintegrates. Yeah. I think that's the plan. But I'll take off the fins. I'll take off the fins. Okay, we've established our base. Our base location is there. Um, the icon sometimes being clipped by the surface. And we'll try to land something else at it. So I've replaced the cupola with the tuna can, the two-seat lander can. And that's double the payload mass to the moon this time. And probably didn't need the mop pump, but we still have it in there. And it has a little bit less electric charge, though, but we'll probably be all right. Otherwise, the setup is uh, similar. The tank is no longer a bunch of baguettes. It's actually uh, this Mephalox fuel tank, this 4.5 ton one. And so it doesn't look as spiffy, but it's a little bit more efficient as far as the fuel quantity and delta V is concerned. And otherwise, launcher is the same, except I removed the fins. We'll see if it still disintegrates. And the root part is still the controller on the launcher. That's sort of important. Unfortunately, I think this results in us not being able to see our delta V at all. Our delta V in the lander is not being represented properly. And we only see this quantity, which may or may not be right. So, yeah. Maybe the launcher doesn't have enough delta-v to launch the somewhat heavier payload this time. We will find out. 
but the payload should be able to make up the difference. So if we we end up not recovering the launcher again, uh, we'll still continue with the mission as planned. So we will send, we'll just go with everybody in order. I'll only send one person per mission, but we'll just go in order. Okay, here we go. Starting off. Oh, it says 4,000 here. Uh, space bar doesn't work. Um, well, clicking that works. And space bar still doesn't work. Ooh, our thrust weight ratio isn't good with the heavier load. Well, I have controls, at least. Even the space bar seems to be a little bit off. Again, delivery to the moon is the priority, not recovery of the launcher. Certainly seems more stable this time. No big surprises. We are past the speed of sound. I don't have any faith that this is reading the Delta V right right now, though. Because uh, if we expand this, that top stage still has zero. Obviously, this mission presents slightly more challenge because we have to actually land at the same location, ideally very close to it. I've packed a little bit of extra Delta V just in case. Okay, that's high enough. Let's get the fairing off. Should I even get the fairing? Maybe... Uh, actually releasing the fairing in the atmosphere is like a glitchy thing to do. I can't... Uh, my spacebar really doesn't work right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but clicking that works. But maybe that's very... that's a very glitchy thing to do. I don't know. It feels glitchy, doesn't it? So yeah, the lander is rather simple in this case. Okay, I think we'll have enough to deorbit it. Alright, but will it be intact? I don't know. Well, let's turn SAS off. Okay, separation. Oh, right, I, I, my spacebar doesn't work. Separation. Okay. That little ring went like that. Okay. Switching vessels. Woo, we get really close. Okay. Let's keep an eye on it. Maybe I should save. I'll save. Spacebar. Oh! When I press spacebar, suddenly things have gone awry. Oh, oh, and deploying the landing legs, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's stabilize. Okay. You're fine, right, Bob? Bob? Fine? Okay, I'm switching vessels. Oh, it zoomed... It, when I switch vessels, it zoomed out like that, too. Well, it's intact. Okay, I should have action grouped arming the parachutes, not to arm them each individually. Oh, they all arm at the same time, okay. Boy settings, well, when safe is fine. I don't know about the minimum pressure and all that business. Okay, it has enough to come back down. Um, I'm gonna switch back to Bob and time warp with Bob. For safety's sake. I think. I think it's safer that way. Okay, right at the edge of render range, we'll switch back. Well, oh, it exploded. <laughs> I was just using the square brackets to change vessels. Well, fine. Uh, tra uh, tracking station is probably a good idea. Still create a bunch of debris though, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. No, I mean, there's a lot of debris here, but... I think default name 60 is Bob. Yeah, it is Bob. Oh yeah, there's all the debris. Hmm... Switching vessels causes explosions. We'll have to see how to mitigate this. Much as we did with the shuttle, we discovered a way to mitigate disintegration. We'll find a way. At least it seems pretty consistent. What's the other orbit there? Hmm. Oh, it's gone anyway. It's gone... 
It's there. Uh, well, there's one there. Oh yeah, sure, they got rid of the Kraken. <laughs> the Kraken, the Kraken is more Kraken-y than ever. It's another one somewhere. I don't see it though. There's an invisible one that's on that path, but I can't see it. Okay, we'll proceed with the mission though. By the way, I'm doing the moon instead of Minmus because yeah, it's more challenging. That's basically it. Don't really need inclination, but we'll fix that mid-course. I did put the base equatorial, that's not that challenging. I could have put it at a high latitude. Anyway, we'll probably just do this first and then correct. There's the moon right there. Standard thing where the moon gets above the horizon and that's the time to go. Two, one, go. Oh, it's not igniting. Okay, I because I apparently had not staged yet. Because spacebar doesn't work. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. That that gives me grave concerns, but Well, at least the Kraken's not mess messing around this time. It's not like uh, measly separating the wing off of the shuttle kind of thing. It's just complete disintegration of your vessel. That's that's the Kraken I'm used to, let's face it. Almost makes you feel warm and cozy to be dealing with a Kraken like that. Okay, off. Okay, and then let me just do a mid-course correction so that we have a flatter trajectory. We really don't need this much inclination when our base is close to the equator. I guess it's only showing the periapsis there instead of in the focused view. Oh well. Okay, that'll do the trick. Yeah, periapsis is fine. Looks equatorial now. Let's go over there. Uh, we're a little bit north of where we need to be, but it's going into the dark too. That's gonna be fun. Let's just... maybe we should just go straight into it. Let's try that for starters. We'll be on a crash course. We're not even gonna try to make orbit. We'll go into a crash course. There's no particular efficiency benefit to this sort of thing, but... We'll save some time. It's time efficient. Also, you know, the longer we wait, the more in the dark the landing location will be, so it's good on that. There's Kerbin from a distance, by the way. I don't know if I've focused on it before. That's how it looks. Mysterious music here around the moon. Okay, go. Can we get that as our target? Set as target. Not sure about that descending node, but okay. Okay, retro. Pretty in line. The correction when we entered SOI was good. Good thing the terrier is like super powerful. Oh, there it is. Okay. And again, uh, the approach is the same way as with the docking the rendezvous and docking where you push the retrograde marker around. But remember at the end of the day that you do have to kill all that velocity. Oh gosh, it's really, really dark now. I think I'm just gonna land here. I can't see a darn thing. Oh, well, within 200 meters. Okay, turning off the engine. Well, I can't see anything, but we're within 200 meters of the other object. Let's time warp here. Let's see if that's safe. Okay, should be able to see stuff now. That's this. Whoop. Oh no, I didn't want the underneath view. Oh, it looks pretty far away, 159 meters away. Not really what I was intending. And the stupid icon. <laughs> But okay, I'm not gonna try and relocate it. Uh, we'll we'll just get our stuff and try and fit it in the middle or something. 
That's the start anyway. Let's see if things blow up if I switch from one to the other, right? We're on bobs and we're gonna use the square bracket to change the bills. Okay. It wobbled a little bit. That's something I was looking for. Crash trajectory, it just said. So that's not great. Let's get solar panels out. Okay. Switch back. Crash trajectory again. <laughs> okay, and I'll get the solar panels out here too. Alright, well, that's the start of our moon base. Not spectacular yet, but we'll try and deliver bigger things to it coming up. Probably not with the same launcher. We'll need a bigger launcher as well. Which means even more spectacular explosions. Anyway, with this beginning, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.